So if you're watching this video, you probably want to know if you can build an i3 machine and if that's sufficient for running Unity. So I actually got myself a machine that has a old i5, which I figure is pretty similar. So uh, let's go ahead and give it a try. But I'm joined by a uh, an amazing uh, game developer. Soundy, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Soundy. I'm a professional freelance game developer. Uses Unity and Unreal. And he's going to just explain to us the considerations you need to make uh, when you're making a game. I actually started myself making games without a graphics processor, and that was a big problem. But uh, I'm curious, if you were to build a minimum spec game development rig, what do you need to consider today? Um, there's, there's a few things you've got to take note of, but like the most important is the games you'll be developing throughout the process of developing them. You won't be implementing the systems to optimize them uh, until the latter stages of development. And there's several reasons for this, but that means for a good chunk of development time, you're stuck with a game that's going to chug. So the higher the processing power you've got access to, both in terms of GPU and CPU, the easier the time you're going to have. Right, exactly. And so it's just going to make your life a whole lot easier if you have a higher end PC. So what sort of PC would you recommend? Uh, what, what, what sort of specs, again, being budget friendly, are, do I need to consider if I'm going to make my own game? Um, so you definitely need a dedicated graphics chip if you can get your hands on one. I mean, it, it depends. The current, the current graphics cards that are on the market are around the 10 series. Yeah. So for uh, the NVIDIA series, they're around the 10 that most people are using. So if you've got a rig that's running those, that can make it easier for you to make sure the game actually runs on the consumer hardware that you'll be targeting. But ideally, you want to be sitting with the highest end possible you can. So you want to be sitting with 30 series um, if you can get your hands on one of those or at least the, the like 20 series where you've got access to, you know, RTX if you need it. Mm -hmm. But uh, from a processing standpoint, just any modern processor you can get your hands on, like Ryzen, Ryzen 7, I believe I'm running right now, um, 3300, I think. Just, um, you know, your modern sort of like high-end CPU will get you uh, get you quite far. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so uh, what, what, how does a CPU help you? When it, when it comes to, you know, making a game, what does a CPU do for you? Well, quite a lot of the instructions you'll be executing are going to be on the CPU. And in fact, quite a lot of the like visual elements can also wind up on there too. The particle systems in Unity, for example, mm -hmm. you've got two options. The traditional particle system, that runs only on the CPU. And then the newer particle system that you have access to, that can actually run on the GPU as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you've got considerations like that to make, but uh, also Unity single threaded. So you got to be you got to be careful with how how each how powerful each thread is that you've got access to. Otherwise, you know you aren't going to be able to take advantage of multi threading unless you go down the rabbit hole and start to build that into the game. That's got to be an active choice by the developer. Gotcha, gotcha. So uh, th think about single threaded performance as really important in, in this, hey? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's show you guys. I actually downloaded, um, you know, this on that i5 I showed you earlier. And, uh, well, let's give Unity a launch here. I'm going to go ahead and click on Unity. And let's see what happens. It's 8 gigabytes of RAM. It's an old i5. Looks like what we have is a crash on launch in the most you know, most recent version of Unity. So obviously, these specifications are not doable. Um, and I'll, I'll put them before you right here. Uh, these are not doable specifications for even starting Unity. Obviously, if you have access to a machine, start it first. But like he said, you're going to run into problems that you don't know about until later on in your game. Now, what are the considerations when it, when it comes to, let's say I want to build a 2D game versus a 3D game. Does that mean I can cut down on the size of the uh, you know processor and graphics card without issue? Uh, it depends. It depends. If you're using Unity itself, no matter what you're um, trying to develop for, it's still going to contain quite a lot of the modules that facilitate each. It does yeah. actually give you the option to start a project for either or, and that actually does remove some of the internal logic for accommodating uh, 3D or accommodating certain elements of 2D. But really, it's not going to go uh, too far. You know what I mean? You're going to need a rig that can run the engine rather than worrying about the kind of game. But you are right, the type of game you're making can influence it. If you're doing a big open world 
3D game versus a small 2D puzzle game, then you can get away with using a lesser rig for that latter example. But really, you want to get as powerful a rig as you can. Unity itself takes a huge amount of resources just to launch. And you've got to understand that Unity is one of several applications you'll be using. Even your browser is likely taking up multiple gigs of RAM, and you're going to need to have your browser open whilst you're developing. Yeah, so when I started to make games, even though I had a decent processor, I had no graphics chip, and for me, uh, it was just a constant chug fest, especially if you want to make a game that you're considering marketing. You've got to record your footage of that game. I even used a, uh, a system back then to like produce PNGs of like, uh, you know, it wasn't real time, essentially. It was PNGs of, of a video one frame at a time to go through my games. Uh, it was it was terrible. You're going to you're going to spend months, uh, you know, doing a lot of hard things that would be a lot easier if you could just run it in real time. Uh, that would make your life a lot easier. So definitely consider uh, going higher end on on either either of those ve- vectors if you can. I would say unless you're going for realism, you don't probably need a uh, you know a 30 series card, uh, high end card, uh, graphics card. You need something uh, that's at least within the last five years. I would say um, and mid tier mid tier last five years. W- would you say that's a, that's a requirement? Yeah, so that's something you can take into account. But even for simple games, um, if you're trying to build lighting within, say, a low-poly game, Mm -hmm. and you want it to take advantage of the GPU, which you have the option of selecting between either or the GPU or the CPU, then building the lighting, it won't have an effect on the final product. Like It doesn't affect the person who's running that, but it will affect you. So even a simple game can benefit from a 3080, for example, for building the lighting faster. And the beauty of it is, is if your game centers on level design, having the ability to have your lighting built even minutes faster allows for more rapid iteration, which eventually leads to a better product. But it's something you do have to take, like, you know, a concession with at some point. And you can get away with trying to do real time lighting where uh, you don't have to worry about those kind of things. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to leave you the next video in the middle of the screen. If you'd like to join a community where you can learn about game development, you can click the Discord link up there, or you can just type it in and uh, get to know us. Uh, We build virtual worlds together. We do it for fun. We do it because we're passionate about it. You're welcome to join us. Uh, We're really into the actual building of stuff. We're not just the talking groups or the support groups where we actually build stuff. Uh, But you're welcome to jump in and, uh, and be part of everything that's going on. Um, We'll see you there, and I'll leave that next video in the middle of the screen now.